All right, everybody, welcome back to week 32 of the West Marches. We are rolling some initiative to see what is going on with Bardrick in the room filled with darkness. So, that. <laughs> great. Okay, well, let's put you all where you belong. Bardrick is along the back wall there. Mm hmm. And then the rest of you are outside. So, <laughs> Frecky and Donald and. Kellen. Kellen, where are you standing? Are you standing right next to the door or? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. So you've got a rope stretching between you and Bardrick. All right. Yep. Bardrick, you get to act first. Now, you don't actually see anything in here. It's pitch black. Yeah. You can okay. feel sort of the direction that, that these attacks came from. Right. Um, crap. So I guess... Well, so have I, I guess Kellen hasn't started pulling me back yet, right? We're in this um, moment I think, time. I think you just got attacked and now you're screaming and it's your turn to do whatever, but nobody's started pulling yet. You're just now saying, hey, get me out of here. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to drink my health potion. Okay. Um. So how do I roll for... I guess I don't add anything to I think to it's that just, really just 2d4 plus 2, I believe. Let me double check that really quick. And then... Um, yes, 2d4 plus 2. Okay. okay. Nice. nice. God. So... Yeah, so pop the potion, I drink it. Wow. And I can um, feel a resurgence of some health, but I'm still feeling super weak. So, mm. um, fuck, if I run, I'm going to take a tax of opportunity. So, uh, I guess I just step. I can do a five foot step without provoking, right? Yes. That's how it works. Well, yeah. you have to. The only thing that provokes is when you leave an area that an enemy threatens. Yeah. So as long as you stay within the threatened area of both of these enemies, then you will oh, know. Oh, within the threatened area. So even if so I step let me, here. Let me do this. I'm going to just, you don't <laughs> you know where these guys both. are. <laughs> 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 so, well, if I don't know where they were, yeah, I'd probably start to like just walk straight back this way mm -hmm. towards the door. Okay, um, but, but you're kind of taking your defensive walking, so you're, you're only moving five feet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. You move five feet towards the door. You can't actually see the door. You're yeah. sort of following the, the rope back. Yeah. And I have okay. screamed, like, something stabbed me. And I'm, and I'm like, start pulling on the rope to, like, pull back. Yeah. All right. So, Frecky, Kellen, and, Barth and Donald, Bartholomew, you're, you're all three out in the hallway. Now, these squares with the orange boxes in them, they have these big chemical lamps set up in them. <laughs> Moving through them is, counts as difficult terrain uh, unless you want to make a dexterity check to see if you knock over the lamp. Okay, so Kellen, no, Frecky, it's your turn. What are you going to do? Do these lamps look like the type that you can just take out and move? You could pick them up and move them. They're quite heavy, and it looks like the top of them is quite hot because it's burning some sort of fuel and just shining this brilliant bright white light at the doorway. Mm. I could probably one-shot whatever is in this room, but it would mm. be at the cost of harming Barter currently. So I armor up <laughs> with okay. armor if I got this. Cool. So that gives you, what, five temporary hit points or ten now? Uh, yeah, I think it's like ten now. Because you're casting with a level two spell slot, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, my gosh. That's... I have the exact... Uh, can you cast the spell from your character sheet? There you go. So, oh, no, the description is for, for uh, burning hands. Let's see, hang on. Why does it keep coming back? <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's fate, Caitlin. Oh. Armor of Agathis. Here it is. 
Uh, higher level. Um, yes, 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 yes. So you've got 10, 10 points of uh, temporary hit points, and <laughs> any creature that hits you takes 10 cold damage. Okay, nice. That's your action. Do you want to move? Do I... Can I move the chemical lamps out of the way, or is that an action? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could, you could lift one and move it. Okay, why not? I'll do some menial labor while we wait for Bardrick to return. Which one are you moving? Just ping it, and, and then move yourself where you're moving it to. Where are they? Do you see the map? Oh, I see where we are now, yeah. Um, I'll just move this one out of Eric's way. Can't seem to ping. Are you just Steven? clicking and holding? Is it A, B, or C? One, two, or three? It was the third one on the, yeah. Cool, great. And move. go ahead and move yourself where you'd like to end up. I'm fine with staying where I am. Oh, I so just want to gonna... set it to the side, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, just like point something on the map so that I can see where you want to move it. Just so it's not delaying us. Over there? Okay, cool. Sure. Yep, you move the lamp out of the way. Okay. Donald, your turn. Okay. Um, I kind of hesitantly step up, wondering why... I, I kind of glance at Frecky. That, that, that's what's keeping the, the stuff in there, isn't it? And I pull... I help pull the rope. Okay, cool. As long as we stay out here, it's still protecting us. Give me a uh, give me a strength check, Donald. All right. I asked you something, Stephen. By the way. Yeah, I see it. Okay, cool. Let's see, check. Got it. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can pull Bardrick ten feet with a strength check like that. So, you join with Kellen, and both of you are heaving on the rope, and and Bardrick comes whistling towards the doorway. But uh, not fully out of the room yet. Okay. Okay, so... Bardrick. Yes. Which one? Yep, that one. Oh, God. Okay. You you feel once again a breath of cold that scrapes against you. This time, however, it doesn't cut into you. It merely brushes against your skin. Kellen, it's your turn. Okay. Get I'm gonna try something I'm gonna try something kind of dramatic. Okay. And I oh, hope it boy. works. Um Oh boy. <laughs> uh let's see here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the sword that slayed the child. Yes. <laughs> and I am going to lift it up mm -hmm. and um, say basically the name of the, the wounded wretch. Is, is it just the wounded wretch? The Doesn't wounded have, wretch like, is, proper is name? the, okay. that's the deity that, that um, Juliet was sort of bonded to. Yes. Okay, cool. So I, I lift up my sword and I say to the wounded wretch, I offer the sword that slew the child. I give it freely of my own will so that some good may come of it. And mm -hmm. then I, I attempt to like, like break it over my knee or something like that. Nice. Give me a strength check. Okay. Or... Yeah, man. Okay, here we go. Uh, core. There we go. Strength check. Did you roll it? Three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You you slam it down, and it and it, it just it just bangs against your knee, and it hurts quite a lot. Um, you end up 
uh, like setting it against the wall and then kicking it in half in order to shatter it. And okay. you, you do manage to get it done, but um, it wasn't okay. nearly as dramatic as you had thought that it might be. Give me a religion check as well. I thought she would like intervene <laughs> or something. <laughs> like no. she would like break it with me or something. Mm. Okay. Uh, religion check. Yes. Okay. Oh Jesus. wow! Yeah. Fuck! I am cursed. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you feel you feel a sense of resolve enter your body. You don't know where from or why, mm -hmm. but you feel somehow as if something you lost had returned to you. All right. Okay. And that's that's it for your turn. Oh, okay. So I don't get the action yet. Okay. Callan, don't no, you you're... think your religious rituals could wait until Bardrick is safe? I quip as I keep pulling. Nice. Yeah, um, no, your action... Don't question me. I know what I'm doing. All right, let's see. Oh, wow, Bardrick, you are lucky. Oh, God, that doesn't sound good. Okay, it's your turn. Okay, <laughs> um, so I... Well, I guess I want to get past these guys. So I want to, um, I'm going to try to back away. I want to disengage and just get as far away from these things as possible and get okay. as close to the light as possible. So nice. I want to go there. Cool. That's it for your turn then. Um, and then, yeah, because that's a disengage. And then, disengage yeah, is an action. Yeah. Yep. Then Boom. Move. Yep. That's all I do. Nice. All right, Frecky, it's your turn. <laughs> Wardrick has just come running out of the room with a rope still tied around her waist, running I past pat, Donald and Kellen. I pat Bardrick on the shoulder, nice. and then I pat my imp on top of her, and that's yep. my action. Very nice. You're yeah, over here right next right. to Bardrick. Yeah. All right, Donald, your turn. You're right, you're right next to this doorway. It's pitch black inside. You can't see anything. What do you do? I back away to behind the lights. Okay. So, let's see. Kellen, mm -hmm. you see, reaching out of the doorway, grasping its way towards you, the shadow of a halfling, stretching out a hand from the room, scraping it against your chest. Okay. Oh, that looks Fuck. like a pretty direct hit. Yeah, Bad good. shadow, no! Yeah. So it deals you 10 damage, and then also you lose one strength. Oh, fucking no save for that? <laughs> no, there's no saving throw. <laughs> Just wondering. Yep. Okay. Worth checking. Okay, so let me get that. Uh, there we go. Nice. Is this permanent or temporary? Um, it's temporary. Who knows? <laughs> All right, Kellen, it's your turn. All right, so I've just broken the sword. Yes. That slew the child. Yeah. I reach down inside me and I try to get that spell off. Yep, okay. How do are I you, feel about it? Do I feel pretty good? It, are you doing it at your current location? Um, one action so I can cast it and walk, right? Yes, or okay. walk and cast. Yep. As I, I'm going, I'm going to cast it at the doorway. And I then, kind of note that Kellen seems to be trying to do something dramatic. You know, Kellen, you could just take five feet. And you could just take a step backwards and you'd be okay. This is I what I must do. Do a quip like that. <laughs> this is what I must do. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Spirit <laughs> Guardians. So like, like, this you see is... what I'm doing as Kellen's going through the motions. Like, you know, just, just back one step away and you'll be okay. The, yeah, nice. You um, So this is a spell that affects any number of creatures that you can see yep, can, be designated, that. can be designated as unaffected by the spell. Yeah, um, so none of my then, friends. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it's a 15-foot radius. Yep, and okay, that's why yeah. I kind of have to walk in. Fantastic. Okay, so yeah, you, you cast this spell, and... You, you feel from within you the, the warmth and the, the loving tenderness of the wounded wretch burst forth out of your chest. 
and you see just the spirits of the dead and abandoned children wailing around you as they swirl and, and howl in circles. Holy shit. So, yeah, the hallway is now filled with the spectral ghosts of, of children swirling around yep. Kellen. That's so terrifying. Lasts up to 10 minutes. That's amazing. And I'm just going to stand in there till these motherfuckers are dead. Okay. So are you just moving into the the room yep. then? Just just swirling <laughs> around me with spirits just very nice. And just slowly walk in until like I feel like, you know, I'm, you know, destroying everything in the room, I guess. <laughs> so I'll okay. walk in, yeah, like like that far. That's good. That looks good. Mhm. Yeah. You got a 15-foot radius, so that's huge. So you're you're well and truly filling this entire room up. Yep. Okay, so I see Kellen step in. I can't help but think of another instance where something like this has happened before. And I amusedly grin to myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Donald was there for that, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, he was. Owl bears, I'm sure, come to mind. Okay, great. Yes. So I need to make some wisdom saving throws. Let's see here. Okay, two of them failed and one of them succeeded. So those that fail take 3d8 radiant damage. And yep. that's already rolled, so that's the 13. And those that succeed take half of that, so six. Okay. So. Great. And I need to do that. Blue. Cool. Beautiful. Okay, that's Kellen's turn. So now it is one of these shadows' turns. Now uh, it starts question, its turn. Does the um, the uh, what's it called the the spell the spirit the, garden? the spirits do they light up anything or not? No, you can see okay. them very dimly, but it is it's still very dark in here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, actually, you see something very strange when you're in here and, and the spirits are flying, flying through the air, they're, they're all sort of sparkling and scintillating with radiant energy. Mm -hmm. And, and they're sort of carving streaks of light through the darkness, but the okay. darkness is quickly closing up behind them. It almost looks like if you cut into flesh, but then the flesh was healing behind the cut, except mm -hmm. instead of flesh, it's darkness. And instead of blood, it's light. That's, that's kind of what's going on here. Right on. I don't suppose these creatures are weak to, Radiant shit. Um, let me see. Oh, actually, they are vulnerable to radiant, so that means that one took an extra six damage, and this one took a whole bunch. So that's nice. Currently, mm -hmm, dead, and that one is also dead. Holy shit! Yeah! Okay, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> the worm has turned. Bardrick, it's your turn. Oh, and by the way, I didn't. I I was going to ask that before the chat like brought that shit up. Just so you know. I, yeah, it's well <laughs> worth well worth reminding me. It GM seems chat like it. To the rest cause it's, <laughs> well, because it's all dark and yeah, shit like yeah. that. And I figured like a light would hurt more these creatures. I'm guessing, you know, just from role playing. <laughs> cool. So he, okay. So both of those things are dead, but like the room is still dark, right? Oh yeah. So um, I'm gonna step back into the room because I see I see Kellen go in. So I'm like, well, that's my homie. So I step in. Okay. And uh, fuck, he's right in the fucking way. Fuck, Kellen. <laughs> um, well, I can't do that then. All right. So uh, one sec. I was gonna cast an AOE, but now I can't because he's right in my fucking way. Um. Glancing below Bartek, do I see a shadow return, or is it still missing? It's gone. Um, yeah, now I don't know which one to do. I guess I'll just do... Um, oh, that one's also... Uh, no. Um, Yeah, I guess I'll... I can't target anything, so I'm going to have to do something. Uh, I guess I'll just do... Fuck. Uh, the Cloud of Daggers. 
but I wonder if I can make it so that it doesn't touch him or myself. So well, it fills a five foot square. So just as long as you place it in a square that no, that neither of you are occupying, you're fine. Um, it's a cube, like it's a cube yeah. all all around five feet, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the one up against the wall where I had first stood when I was touching the wall. So. Mm -hmm. How do I ping it? Whatever. However you fucking ping. I know, I know where you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So there, I'm going to just throw a cloud of daggers across the room. Um, and I, I guess for the glass, I'll use the empty vial that I had my uh, healing potion in. So I nice. just like crack it in my hand and then I throw it across the room and all the little shards start to just become a, like swirling to a cloud of glass shards and then they rain down upon that area. Wicked. And as that happens, I say, I got quick, quick, sit, racks, give them whip, flash. Kellen hits big, gets us, make them drop fast. Now go and get your knuckles rock, because this is what we live for. Come on, everybody. This is some motherfucking monsters. And, um, <laughs> and I look behind me, and I'm hoping I can still see the doorway. But if not, I'm, like, hoping that fucking Frecky and Donald start coming in as well. Got it. Yeah, you can still see the doorway. It's, it's right behind you. Oh, that's nice. Okay, good. Okay. Um, it is dimmer than it used to be, though, from the current position that you are. Right. Frecky, it's your turn. What are you going to do? Should we join them, Eric? Uh, what we should do is we should move one of these lights in the room. That's... I was going to carry one, but if you want to take it to them, I can stand guard here. Let's both do it. Twice the light is twice the bright. Okay. Of course. <laughs> so each of you are picking up one of these lights that are right next to the, the both of you and carrying them in the room? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll take the one that I put off to the side and bring that one in. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's one, two, three. Uh, you can actually only get to it and then get back to where you are for this round. That's fine. Take okay. the one that's close by. I'll follow you wherever you go, Eric. <laughs> pick it up. Okay, cool. So both of you pick up the lamps that are next to you, and then you both run into the room. Mm -hmm. All right, very nice. So, Frecky, I'm going to put you there. And these two lamps, I'm going to grab them. Whoop. I'll just drag them in here. Okay, cool. All right, yeah, you, you push the lamps into the darkness and the darkness sort of recoils from them. And again, the, the light and the distance that it travels is severely compressed. These lamps, even these incredibly hot, bright burning chemical lamps, they are only projecting light out about 10 feet into the room. So all of a sudden, to those of you who are in here, it's just like a blinding flash of, of incredibly bright light, even though for anybody who's used to being in the light, like the two of you, um, it's incredibly dim in here, even with the addition of these two chemical lamps. And then something strange happens. All of the darkness begins receding away from the light and flowing into the back corner and then flowing around the lamps behind them and pouring out into the hallway behind you. Oh, Oops. Shit. That's why I wanted to use the other lamp. <laughs> <sighs> Great. That's good. That's real good. Uh, standing right next to Bardrick, not Bardrick, standing right next to Frecky is a shadow of a halfling. And that's, that's all shadow. that you see. Let's see, I need to grab that one and bring it to the token layer so you can see it now. Okay, cool. Yes, it is its turn, and seeing as how it's right next to Frecky, it leaps towards you, attacking you, Frecky. So I believe that does not hit. Uh, hold on, hold on. No. When the creature enters the area for the first oh, time, or yes. starts its turn there. Yes, uh, so that's just a wisdom save. It completely fails. So as soon as it reaches out, lashing towards you, Frecky, these spirits that are flying through the air um, and howling past your ears, they, they latch onto it and then tear it apart. 
and you see this this halfling shadow just vanish into a cloud of ash and evaporate into the air. I reach out my claws to the mist. Yes, you can. It's very dramatic. Is there a... Okay, did you... Did anything, like, escape the room? The darkness. Now the room is very brightly lit. Right. The, oh, so the darkness, like, le- like, leaked out of the room? Yes. Okay. I'm going to, like, attempt to chase it down, I suppose. Nice. Yeah, okay. So it is your turn. You go running out into the hall. And as soon as you step out into the hall, again, you're, you're just flooded into darkness. You, you can't see a thing. Um, but all around you, these, these spirit guardians, they're slashing through the darkness and, and carving lines of light through the air. Okay. So, Bardrick, it's your turn. What are you going to do? Uh, off on the other end of the room, you do see your cloud of daggers uh, floating yeah. against the wall, and, spinning. Um, just, to, just to clarify, I put it in chat, but um, in our private chat, but uh, it is a three by three, not a single five foot cube. Just I so interpret you know. a cube that's five feet on each side to be a, a single five foot cube. Oh, weird. Okay. Yes. Uh, it says it's an AOE, but I guess it's an AOE of one square then. It doesn't matter because right. there's nothing left in here anyways, right? There's, Correct. Okay, so the room is empty. So I'm going to follow Kellen. And yeah. Okay. Very nice. And, um, yeah, stepping out into the hallway, you two are enveloped in darkness. Ploof, just immediately. So because I'm not really sure where anything is or what direction anything is, I guess I'm just going to start slashing out. So uh, I will, um, I will, I can, can I see Kellen at all? Because he's holding his torch. Yes, you can see very dimly see the small dim well, bulb of his torch. Yeah. So I'm going to use my rapier and I'm just going to attack the square that's like to the bottom right of me. Okay. okay. Bottom right of you. Got it. Yep, sure. Go ahead and give me an attack roll. With disadvantage, of course. Uh, nice. Geez. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> Your rapier rips through the air, but it, you don't Pretty feel desperate. the catch on anything. Okay. Yeah. And, Frankie, um, it's your turn. Or did you, did you have anything else you wanted no, to No, I just wanted to say, like, like, Kellen, we should move towards the light. That's I, uh, I will see this creature dead. Mm. Frecky, what are you doing? Who are the light bears now, Eric? Do we bring them outside? Do we carry them wherever we go now? Yes, make we sure that, that blindly, like make them? sure that darkness disappears, Frecky. <laughs> Do I see when? Because I can't really. Can I see Bardrick? Yes, vaguely. There's a, as, a darker shape within the encroaching darkness at the doorway. As she attacks the area around her, do I see her getting brighter? No. I can't attack this darkness, Eric. (laughs) Start laughing. (laughs) No, no, you're not attacking the darkness. You're simply shining your light at it. Make sure it goes away. (laughs) I guess that is attacking the darkness. It just runs away from us. It just runs away from us. (laughs) If only you had magic missile. (laughs) <laughs> I knew someone was going to get it. There we go. <laughs> okay, so what are you doing, Frecky? I, I just step out towards Bardrick with the light shining okay. in front of me. You grab the light and you're shining it in front of you and stepping out towards Bardrick. Okay, very cool. I, so let's I want see. to walk out of the door backwards and then very quickly swing around with the light. Okay, you're walking out the door backwards and then swinging around. So you're, you're actually backing into the darkness with the light out in front of you. Yes. <laughs> so let's see. Yep, 10 foot square radius of light. Excellent. <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you step backwards and... Um, I shouldn't have deleted that shadow because now I need another one. <laughs> Okay, great. 
Hmm. There we go. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you step backwards into the darkness and then you swing around with the light. And wherever you swing the light, the darkness sort of peels back away from it and, and flees. Um, and that's about it. Donald, it's your turn. What are you going to do? Don't worry, I'll make sure this room does not spawn more shadows as I put the lamp off to the corner, shining it into the room. Nice. And I check the room for valuables. Okay, give me a perception check. Yeah, you, you glance around the room and it's it's a plain flat walled 20 by 20 room with no apparent hidden nooks or crannies or any sort of containers or anything. So you don't think there's anything hidden in here. Mm. <sighs> Damn it, no book. Whose turn is it next? It's Kellen's. Okay. Um, or it's not the Shade's turn? Oh, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Damn it! I don't know what you would be reminding me of, but... Uh, no, I need no, I need the Shade to take a turn so it takes damage. It is not the Shade's turn yet. Um, okay. But since uh, it happens when the Shade first enters the area, it should roll for that. So let's do that. Okay. That is a failure. So it takes how much? 3d8... Yeah, do damage. I roll a new one every time or not? We would roll a new one every time. So okay. I, I rolled a 15, which is pretty strong. So, um, yep. yeah, you, you next to you, you hear this. And then you see shadows, or not shadows, but these spirits just swarm down on a patch of darkness and rip it apart. <laughs> yeah. So it's, nice. it's gone. Very well done. Kellen, it, it's your turn. What do you do? Uh, not all the darkness is gone? No. Okay. Well, I'll keep I'll keep concentrating and, and like staying within the darkness until it is gone. Okay, cool. You see the darkness flowing back in the direction that you came from, back down the hallway. So um, if you just sort of walk that way slowly, like 10 feet, you'll stay well within the darkness. That is what I'm doing. Perfect. Let's see. I'm going to grab you and give you a radius. Yeah. So that's what a... 30 foot radius, 15 30, foot radius. 30 foot diameter, 15 yeah. radius, yeah. There we go. There's your spirit guardian's radius. Everything in there is just being ravaged by spirits <laughs> flying through the air. Pretty great. Frecky, your turn. You're carrying this lantern. You've swept it out. Of okay, the now, question to you. Yes. Um, if, I, if I, like, walk into the darkness... Mm-hmm. Um, and it says when the creature enters the area, does that mean as well as me walking into that area too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just if, didn't if know you if there was more the area damage to have been done. Yeah. I think, you know, the the most that you can do is like once per round, basically. Like once on your turn and then once on its turn. So you can like walk forwards and backwards and like enter, exit, enter, ent exit, you know. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Frecky, your turn. I shout to Helen, this could be good for us. Let it do our bidding like the beetle. Just let the darkness be. Nice. Is that all you do for your turn? Where are you pointing the light? Is it in the direction of Kellen, down that way? Or are you pointing it back towards the other lamp? Back to the room? It's, uh, can I grab my arrow? It's like... This one? This way. Okay, cool. Sure. He went yeah. the other... Oh, that's towards... What, did he go left or right? He went, he's, he's moving this direction. To uh, the left. Yeah, yeah. Just wherever the light's not shining. Okay, so you're just shining the light in that direction as well? Yes. Cool. Yeah, okay. Um, your light seems to make the, the cloud of darkness move faster away from you. Um, and Kellen has to actually pick up his pace just a little bit to stay, <laughs> stay within it. Donald, your turn. The room you're in is now empty, brightly lit by these chemical lanterns. What do you do? Yeah. Uh, so that direction that Kellen is walking, is that where we came from? Yes. Okay. I go the other way and start opening doors. Okay. Very nice. Kellen, you're just going to keep following this darkness until your spirit guardians run out. 
Until, yeah, until the darkness dissipates, yeah. Okay, cool. So let's see. I think we skipped my turn. Um, I think it's we, went right from, we, right from, we went right from Kellen to Frecky. Yes. And then we, so, we skipped Bardrick. Bardrick, what are you doing for this past turn? So for that past turn, I'm just going to keep up with Kellen, and um, I'm going to keep like slashing into the shadow in front of me, yes. um, keeping him to my side, and tr I guess trying to... I don't agree with this light thing, so I'm actually trying to like, make myself as big as I can to block the light, but it's not really going to do much because I'm three foot six. So, mm. Okay, got it. So you're, you're slashing out, striking out the darkness with your rapier, but you don't ever feel it catch any purchase. You are also like within this, this cloud of swirling spirits that are carving streaks of light through the air. It's a very strange and otherworldly experience to be standing inside of the pitch blackness as all of these spirits swirl around and carve streaks and stars into the sky around you. You can't even see the walls. Um, so, very nice. So you two are just continuing to walk that way. Kellen, your spell will last for ten minutes, mm -hmm. while Donald continues on the other direction, opening doors. So, Donald, let's see what you find. Good. Okay. Um, Donald, you, you open a large number of doors. Um, let's see. Yeah, you, you open a number of doors, probably 30 or 40 more doors before finally you find one that's locked. No, oh, fantastic. I'll note this locked door and keep opening doors. Okay. Yeah. You go all the way around to the staircase that, 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 um, that you came down and you've opened every door. The only room that you have not explored is the one that was locked that you just passed. Um, while you're doing that, Kellen and Bardrick, you two are following this darkness as it flows down the passageway and it, it reaches the stairs and, and you begin following it upwards. And you hear from the top of the stairs voices crying oh, out shit. and booming. What do you do? Voices um, doing what? Crying out and booming through the darkness. Okay. So I look at I look at I think it's a Scrivener's. Maybe we should just back off now. So there's no, so I'm not hearing any like of the sounds that I was hearing before as far as like my spirit guarding attacking something. No. Okay. So it very very well could just be like non corporal darkness. Mm. Okay. Um, Does that voice echo over to where I am? No. Okay. Yeah. You're rather probably. Than give, Opening your 25th door by this point. Got it. Yeah, rather than give away our position, I'll let the, I'll let the darkness escape. Okay. And move back down and collect everybody. And Okay, so you, you, head, you, you turn around, head backwards, and, and, yep. and retreat. And I, I want to walk into the room where, the thing, where I broke my sword. Yes. And I want to take, like, the broken, like, hilt. Okay, you've got the, the sword, hilt. And I want to... Put it like put it in my backpack. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. You do. Uh, slowly, your your spirits fade, and and um, you feel them sort of retreat back into you, and then whoa, the power leaves you. Um, as you turn away from the stairs, Kellen, sort of a little bit in the past, as you de as you decide to leave, you hear from the top of the stairs voices shouting out, saying, "No, it's escaped. What has happened?" And then, of course, you you also hear this. <laughs> And then you hear shrieks and groans as the voices at the top of the stairs revert to silence. Pretty oh, sure we God. just genocided this whole fucking Scrivener Tower with these shadows. Like everything we keep finding, we're killing a lot of people. Damn this it, this is not is how it's supposed fault. to go. Not no going one out. stops us from reading. This is. I feel these bad. These are not. These are not things that that should be kept. These are things yeah. that should be destroyed. Yeah, these are they, pets. they have sown the whirlwind and now they are reaping it. Scrivener's are bad, man. They got all this shit down here. They're just, you know, sitting on it, waiting for the day where it just comes and clobbers their faces. This isn't good. Well, speak of that. There's something in this door that you might want to slay as well, as I take out my thieves' tools and I start unlocking it. 
Even if we find the book, do you think that maybe, considering how dangerous all of these monstrosities are, do you think maybe the book might be just as dangerous? Yeah, maybe. Donald, <laughs> you successfully unlock the lock. Yay. Um, on this door, a large Roman numeral three is inscribed. All right, Kellen, your moment for salvation lies right in this door. I, I kind of step aside. I go first. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to take all of you uh, in, in your current configurations. Oops. And I'm going to... We're going to use your positions as a, as a, a reference. Um, can you, as describe, if this room is can you describe what you described to Donald again? As he opened the door? Yeah, so you've got, you've got this room in front of you. Um, you haven't opened the door yet. Oops. Oh, right, okay. Um, but this door looks different. It's got a large Roman numeral three inscribed on it. And it was locked. It was locked with the strange sort of, um, sort of geometric lock. Actually, I think you had the key that would go to this. Oh. Yeah. Before... <laughs> Before we do, um, I look at, okay, yeah, actually, there's, yeah, Kellen and myself are not doing too well. Um, so I'm going to just quickly make us feel a bit better, guys, before we do this next room. And I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Kellen okay. and myself. Both of them. So... There's Kellen's. Okay, cool. And you're using a first level spell slot? Yeah. Okay, so, so you ro roll 1d8 plus your charisma modifier. Oh, she does. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yes. Good. Bard Bardrick's <laughs> charisma modifier. You're, you're good. Hold on. I actually just forgot what my fucking charisma modifier is. So give it's me like a plus four. It's, four. <laughs> it's plus four. Oh. Is it? Hold on. Yeah, it's plus four. Totally. There you go. So, it's Kellen, you get eight hit points back. Okie dokie. And Bardrick. And mine. Nice. There. Very nice. I think you're both feeling a lot healthier. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, okay. So, you, you all stand in front of this door. Uh, you have the key to it. And, wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we didn't hear any singing, Bard. For that uh, spell there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, you're a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> hold on. Where, oh, my God. My cure wounds are super far away. Um, <laughs> your palms are sweaty. Knees weak. Arms are heavy. There's blood on your tunic already. Hold steady because they still ain't ready. See, I'm nervous, but on the surface, I look calm and ready to drop bombs. And the DM's forgetting what you rolled now. The whole chat's chanting loud. Your foes open up. <laughs> mouth but the words won't come out he's choking now everybody's joking huh the clocks run out hurry up stand up now and like nice <laughs> bravo <laughs> jesus I love so it. good i love it every time very very nice all Excellently right done gg and i just i just look down and look down at bardrick and i say thank you my friend <laughs> very nice all right, you're both feeling much better than you were before. So you're standing in front of a door. It's got a large Roman numeral three inscribed on it. Um, there's a lock. It's that strange geometric shape that you saw before. You do have one of those keys that you stole from one of the Scriveners. What do you do? Well, you've got the key, Donald. If you want to open it up, I'll, I'll go first. I actually don't have a key, but I opened it the same way I opened the last one. So yeah. I, I'm using my oh, thieves' okay. tools to do this stuff. I wasn't privy to the knowledge that they had a key. Okay. Where so, um, where are you each standing? Move move your tokens to where you want to be rela related to this door. Uh, after opening right it door. and having seen what's been going on, I'll just kind of take a glance over there. That seems good. After you, my friends. Okay. Who is the one opening the door? I am. Okay, Bardrick, you push open the door. 
Um, I think inside you can just see uh, barely through through some very dim light. Um, yeah, you you see a large statue that looks like it's sculpted out of rock sitting in the room, and you can't really see too much. Um, as soon as you open the door, the statue sort of jerks, and then it starts slowly moving. What do you do? I close the door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about this fucking tower. Did you? We use that the key to unlock that, right? <laughs> uh, no. no, you you unlocked it with the um, with uh, Donald's thieves tools. Oh, we didn't use that geometric key or whatever. No. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I also that curse. Bad? <clears throat> Quick, I'll 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 try to lock it again. Well, does, okay. does it seem like the door locks when it closes? No, but you can also just use the key that you have to... Okay. Yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, you, you close the door and lock it. No problem. <laughs> Did you see any valuables in there, Fardrick? I saw a, a statue move, and uh, it looked like death, so... I don't think that's the book room. I think we're good. Let's just keep going, maybe. Okay. Back upstairs, follow the shadows. Was there another stairwell down? No. Oh shit, this is the final floor. Yes. Uh, How much of the final floor have there been places? Oh, there's two corridors, right? You have examined all of the circle that makes up the finer floor. This is now, the only room, and then there are half, half of the rooms to the left on the floor right above us. Yes. You did not explore the left half of the floor above you. Oh, we must have missed the book in there. <laughs> Gazing Maybe at we the should... ceiling, do I see any trap, anything, a book taped to the ceiling? <laughs> a book taped to the ceiling <laughs> right next to the bell that's ringing at the entrance. You see a book. On the, on the spine of it is written, the book that you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, maybe I could open up this door one more time and just take a better look and see if there was anything that this golem might be protecting. And, um, yeah, and I pull out my rapier just in case. Okay. I'm going to try to open up the door and go. Are you so still in there's, there's, a, there's a whole other hallway we haven't explored yet? That's so the, on the floor the, right above us, yeah. Each of, these, each of these floors is built like a ring. Right. And at, at the bottom end of the ring is the staircase coming down. And at the top end of the ring is the staircase that leads down to the second floor, right? So you guys went all along the right-hand half of the upper ring, but you didn't check the left-hand half of that upper ring. So this side of the upper level, you haven't looked at. But you looked at the entire circle of the lower level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We um, could come back to this store if we find nothing upstairs, Bardrick. So in your current configuration, you know, Bardrick, that you're not going to see more than you just saw. And it's because the light isn't bright enough to reach far enough for you to really see it. If you pulled out a torch or if you got yeah. Frecky to come over well, here, I still have my torch, right? More. Oh, did I you have, have a torch, torch also? in my hand? Yeah, I still oh, had the... Okay. Kellen's got a torch and I've got a torch. Okay, yeah. cool. So let's yeah, see. That's, that's a 20-foot square torch. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, right. Because Frecky didn't have a torch. Frecky was carrying the... Uh, she was carrying the lantern. Yeah. Okay, and Kellen has a torch, so that's a 20-foot square. Good. Okay, yeah, then actually I can give you just a little bit more information. You, you okay. open the door. Give me a perception check to see how yeah. much of the inside of the room you see. Um, there. Oh, yeah. really? So what you do see is that this statue is large and it's black and it's carved out of glass and its face is just completely flat. It's a single flattened pane and it's got a dark rune sort of carved into the face, just a single image chunk set right there. Um, and that's all you see. Like the, the thing jerks to life and it starts moving slowly and reaching towards you. Oh no, you, you see more, of course. Um, it stands motionless amidst a pile of what look like leather scraps, and a few scraps of what looks like leather are hanging off of its body as well. And, and that's all. That's what you okay. see. Okay. The rune on its face, can I tell what, what it is? Give me is an it, arcana is it test. Is shaped like? 
Okay. My arcana is not that great. No. Yeah, okay. You don't know. Um, here's what the rune looks like. Something like that. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, and I don't see any like bookshelves or tables or anything, right? It's just the statue in the room? Yep. It's just an empty room with a statue standing in the middle of some scraps of leather. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so then that's when I would, so that, that's the first time I looked in the room. So then I would, I still would close the door. And then when I turned to everybody, I say, there's nothing else in there except for the statue, but there's a bunch of scrap on the floor. Maybe we should just check out the upper floor. And then if not, maybe, I don't know, we could fight this thing, but I, I can't imagine where the book is now. Like I knew it was downstairs. I knew because they, I know it's got to be on the bottom floors. It's got to be here somewhere. So we might just Don't have worry. To it's always this. in the last place you look, which is going to be upstairs. And then I just kind of like, sh sh like my shoulders roll over and I look really um, disappointed and forlorn. And Do you I think start it might be interesting, though, to keep this door open as we go and search upstairs. It might prove to be an interesting distraction. That sounds kind of bad. I don't really want to have more people die to save Juliet. I'm going to go with no. No one can come from behind us. We checked everywhere. It's true. No. Leaving okay. this store open could just lead to us getting flanked by a statue and a shadow. All right, let's go upstairs then and find that book. Nice. Okay, the four of you head back down towards the staircase that leads up. Um, <coughs> you, you start climbing the stairs, and halfway up the stairs, you see the body of six Scriveners slumped to the Fuck. floor in death. Um, wow. Three of them are wearing red stoles around their necks, and one of them is wearing a white stole around its neck. Each of them has a chain that links from its belt into its left-hand pocket. Purring. I get down on all fours and I start going through their pockets and inspecting okay. their chains. Yeah, I start let's, to feel pretty sick. <laughs> let's see what you find in the pockets of these Scriveners. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> Excellent. You find... Um, uh, a couple of bags at their, at their belts, pouches, that contain a, a small collection of gems, not, none of which looks worth terribly much individually, but all together are worth some amount. So let's see. Um, I'm just going to copy all of this into chat, and you guys can, can divide it up a little bit later. Let's see. You find 1,700 copper pieces, 600 silver pieces, 60 gold pieces, an azurite, a blue quartz, two eye agates, a hematite, a lapis lazuli, a rhodochrosite, a tiger eye, a turquoise, a small chime, like a, a little silver chime with a small ringer inside of it, and a liquid potion. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's, <laughs> what, that's what you discover as you rifle through these corpses. Um... You continue up the staircase? Yes. Yep. Okay. I also, um, on one of them, I start touching their nose. Yeah, their, their proboscis beak face. Yeah, sure, just going to totally. stroke it. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, double back, and how easy was it to carry those fancy lanterns around? The ones that um, stayed away. They oh, were yeah, I meant hard. to be carrying one. They were hard to carry. They're, they're very large, very hot. It would, it would take your full concentration to be moving them around. Okay, that's like, if, they, if they killed six of these, then maybe we should take one with us upstairs, but... Right. Let's do that. So I guess okay. we all go back downstairs, and as a team, we carry one light up the stairwell. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Who, who are the two people who are carrying the light between them? I would imagine it, I'm a bit too small for it. Donald and Kellen? Kellen and I will do it. 
All right. Yep. Very nice. Okay, so Donald and Kellen, you two are sharing the carrying of this thing, and you can move at full speed while doing that because you're, you're sharing the load. Um, you manage to get up to the top of the stairs. Uh, you hear the chimes from the ceiling, the bells peeling slowly. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, God. But you notice that up here, the lanterns that were lit on the walls are now all extinguished. Yeah. Why don't we take a five-minute break? <laughs> we will come back for more. Hour number three, week 32 of the West Marches. Oh, God, we're going to die. <laughs> 